Weekly Robot News. Hello viewers, welcome back to your one-stop shop for all news robotics. We're back once more with the latest, sometimes shocking happenings of the robotic tech world. From working on fingertip sensitivity for robots, robotic cubes for space exploration, and arguments on banning killer robots to people preferring female robots over their male counterparts, public outcry over US testing robots across the Mexican border, and even the Uncanny Valley show, we have it all and more. So without further ado, let's jump right into our weekly updates. However, before we do, we request you to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss another upload of ours. Having said that, let's get right to it. Highlights of the week. Fingertip sensitivity for robots. In a paper published on February 23rd of 2002 in Nature Machine Intelligence, a team of scientists at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems, MPIIS, introduced a robust soft haptic sensor named Insight that uses computer vision and a deep neural network to accurately estimate where objects come into contact with the sensor and how large the applied forces are. The research project is a significant step towards robots being able to feel their environment as accurately as humans and animals. Like its natural counterpart, the fingertip sensor is very sensitive, robust, and high resolution. The thumb-shaped sensor is made of a soft shell built around a lightweight stiff skeleton. This skeleton holds up the structure much like bones stabilize the soft finger tissue. The shell is made from elastometer mixed with dark, reflective aluminum flakes, resulting in an opaque grayish color that prevents any external light finding its way in. Hidden inside this finger-sized cap is a tiny 160-degree fisheye camera, which records colorful images illuminated by a ring of LEDs. When any objects touch the sensor's shell, the appearance of the color pattern inside the sensor changes. The camera records images many times per second and feeds a deep neural network with this data. The algorithm detects even the smallest change in light in each pixel. Within a fraction of a second, the trained machine learning model can map out where exactly the finger is contacting an object, determine how strong the forces are, and indicate the force direction. The model infers what scientists call a force map. It provides a force vector for every point in the three-dimensional fingertip. Robotic Cubes – Self-Reconfiguring Electrovoxels for Space Exploration if faced with the choice of sending a swarm of full-size, distinct robots to space, or a large crew of smaller robotic modules, you might want to enlist the latter. Modular robots, like those depicted in films such as Big Hero 6, hold a special type of promise for their self-assembling and reconfiguring abilities. But for all of the ambitious desire for fast, reliable deployment in domains extending to space exploration, search and rescue, and shape-shifting, modular robots built to date are still a little clunky. They're typically built from a mandre of large, expensive robots to facilitate movement, calling for a much-needed focus on more scalable architectures, both up in quantity and down in size. Scientists from MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, CSAIL, called on electromagnetism, electromagnetic fields generated by the movement of electric current, to avoid the usual stuffing of bulky and expensive actuators into individual blocks. Instead, they embedded small, easily manufactured, inexpensive electromagnets into the edges of the cubes they repel and attract, allowing the robots to spin and move around each other and rapidly change their shape. Should we ban killer robots? Lethal autonomous weapon systems demand careful consideration, but nightmare scenarios of the future won't become reality anytime soon, says a UNSW Canberra military ethicist. The term killer robots conjures up images of sci-fi scenarios where wars are being fought by Terminator-like soldiers, but according to UNSW Canberra military ethicist Dean Peter Baker, it's not quite that scary or cinematic. In fact, killer robots or Lethal Autonomous Weapon Systems LAWS, may actually save lives on the battlefield. Associate Professor Baker's latest book, Should We Ban Killer Robots?, draws from his experience on the International Panel of Regulation of Autonomous Weapons. IPRAW is an international network of researchers tasked with providing nonpartisan guidance to the national delegations engaged in the UN debate over whether or not to ban or regulate LAWS. He explained that there are two main arguments for banning LAWS. One focuses on the potential consequences of allowing LAWS to be used in war. For example, opponents are concerned that LAWS won't be capable of operating within the boundaries of the law of armed conflict, a Professor Baker said. The worry here is that they'll use force in an indiscriminate or disappropriate manner. The other main type of argument is that, consequences aside, it's simply fundamentally wrong to allow a machine to make the choice to kill a human being. People prefer interacting with female robots. 
People are more comfortable talking to female rather than male robots working in service roles in hotels, according to a study done by Washington State University researcher Su Ben Seo. The study, which surveyed about 170 people on hypothetical service robot scenarios, also found that the preference was stronger when the robots were described as having more human features. The findings are detailed in a paper published online in the International Journal of Hospitality Management. People have a tendency to feel more comfort in being cared for by females because of existing gender stereotyping about service roles, said Seo, an assistant professor of hospitality management at WSU's Carson Business College in Everett. That gender stereotype appears to transfer to robot interactions, and it's more amplified when the robots are more human-like. Even before the pandemic, the hotel industry struggled with high turnover of employees, and Seo noted that some hotels have turned to robots and automation for a variety of functions, from dishwashing and room cleaning to customer service, such as greeting guests and delivering luggage. Examples range from the female humanized robots named Pepper at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in Las Vegas to the fully automated FlyZoo hotel chain in China, where guests interact only with robots and artificial intelligence AI features. Uncanny Valley an animatronic robot. A figure sits alone on stage, dressed in comfy jumper and trousers, one leg crossed over the other. He slowly moves his hands and turns his head. But this sole performer in Uncanny Valley by theater company Rimini Protocol is not human. It's a lifelike animatronic robot model of the German writer Thomas Mell. The show's director, Stefan Kage, had seen animatronics used in museums, where he found that there was not sufficient time for what he calls the empathy mechanism to kick in. But he wondered what would happen if the robot became a performer, someone with whom we start to identify. His idea was to create a monologue for a robot that looked as human as possible. Not perfect, but average and fragile. Evie Bauer, who worked on the robot's design, suggested that the best way to make something irregular and flawed was to find a human subject and make a copy. The question was who? Mel had recently published The World and My Back, a philosophical exploration of his bipolar disorder that Kagi had found intriguing. Mel, in turn, liked the idea of being made into a robot. The costume department at the Munich Kammerspiel Theater Company took a silicone cast of Mel's head, a particularly claustrophobic process documented in the production, and then there were, says Kagi, some spooky moments, for Mel meeting his robotic doppelganger. The result is undeniably disconcerting. Even though its inner workings are visible through a gap in the back of the robot's head, its movements are delicate and somehow tender. Science fiction often shows us technology taking over, but Kagi needed to program the robotic mills every movement. U.S. testing of robotic patrol dogs on Mexican border prompts outcry. The U.S. is testing robotic patrol dogs along its frontier with Mexico that says it could provide mechanical reinforcements for border guards in a move criticized by a leading domestic rights group as a, quote, civil liberties disaster. Adding to the outcry, the company that developed the dogs, Ghost Robotics, has previously showcased a four-legged robot that has a sniper rifle attached to its back. The Department of Homeland Security, DHS, said this week that its research and development arm had offered border guards a helping hand, or paw, to work with force multiply patrols. Due to the demand of the region, adding quadruped mechanical reinforcements is a smart use of resources, the DHS said in a blog post. Gavin Canali, the chief operating officer at Ghost Robotics, said the unarmed 45-kilogram robot dog was bred to walk on sand, rocks, and hills, as well as human-built environments such as stairs. The robots were tested in El Paso, Texas, on the international border. In a desert area, the dogs were programmed to go on simulated sentry duty, DHS said. With that, we end today's dose of our weekly updates. Join in next time for more of such exciting news happenings from the robotic world.